Hi, this is Yosef Bhartia and we are here at Cuban and Cloud Edicon in Atlanta. And today we have with us Simone Morleto, Head of Growth at vCluster. Simone, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah, I am excited. And we are here at the event despite all the shutdown, flight cancellation. I don't see any impact on the traffic. And I also like the layout here, the way they have spaced out. There are enough room for everybody to go to the booth, to talk to each other, and as usual, great traffic, great audience. That's my perspective. What has been your impression so far at this show? Yeah, very similar. I thought a lot of people would actually not make it, but uh, just looking at the line and the excitement and people are really buzzing is actually very busy. One of the busiest I've been. I, I pretty much done uh, all the KubeCon from day one. I was at the very first KubeCon in San Francisco. Um, yeah, I've been in the Kubernetes space now for like more than 10 years. And uh, what I see this year in particular, a lot of people talking about being efficient, being green. That is the complete opposite to what I see the AI company doing where they're building data center, they're really going crazy. The Kubernetes community is still focused on being really efficient and being green. And a lot of companies are talking about that. And how do you achieve that? If I ask you, what are the themes that you have seen throughout the years have remained the same since there's day zero of KubeCon and today and at the same time where you've seen those themes have totally disappeared today. You don't even hear about them and new themes. Are Just give us a contrast. Yeah, I mean, it's always like this. Themes, they come and go, they're like waves. And every couple of years, there is a new one coming and AI just came out of nowhere. And like sometimes themes are just themes. You just add a word next to the company, but the technology really doesn't change. With AI and GPU, the technology is changing because Kubernetes was not really built to support the GPU workloads. Just because the GPUs are built differently, very differently from CPUs. So a lot of things have to change. And so there's really a lot of innovation happening on the core Kubernetes, on the scheduler, all the company around. So not just the buzzword, it's really like uh, technology improvement to support its new AI workloads. So yeah, I'm, this is not like before cloud, multi-cloud. Kubernetes was always built to be multi-cloud. Then you have the networking issue. That's what I spent a lot of time fixing networking. Eh? And how do you do secure networking between clouds? How do you move workload? How do you stateful workload? So it's, those things are kind of solved right now. So it's good that you know, AI is bringing new challenges to really reinvigorate uh, this technology. And that is a perfect segue to vCluster. Even the name change aptly, you know, how the word is changing around it. And you folks are doing a lot of work in this space, you made reference, you know, architecture announcement with NVIDIA. A lot of work is going on in multi-tenancy, private node, auto node. You folks are building a lot of, you can say, building blocks. Uh, so I want to also understand that journey, but I want to also align it with your own journey, your own background. So talk a bit about your own background and how do you see this announcement here at KubeCon with NVIDIA is kind of fulfilling the prophecy in one way or the other. Yeah, well, I joined VMware early days when VMware was really like dipping their toes with containers and they were trying to figure out how to do containers. And then I led the Tanto team for uh, seven years. And really what we were seeing back then was like, uh, we have these huge Kubernetes clusters and how do we share them across multiple teams, multiple views, multiple companies. And Kubernetes came up with this concept of namespaces, but like the name is called namespaces. They're not called team spaces or company spaces. So they were really meant for segregating simple apps. Because at the beginning, people were just building simple web apps. And so at Tanzu, we were like, well, that's not really a way you can segregate Kubernetes. You need to create multiple clusters. So we came up with TKG and we came up with Cluster API to make it easier for people to create cluster, create cluster on demand, and give every single team or company their own cluster. But that also created cluster sprawl and became like very expensive because we're really replicating full clusters. 
So I feel like now vCluster is taking that to the next level, where if I want to give people autonomy to do their own things, I don't need to replicate the full cluster. I can just take my control plane, put it in a pod, and still share my base cluster. So really, vCluster take I don't know, what the work I was doing at Tanzo to the next level, make it more efficient, easy to share, and now with all the innovation that we had done through the summer, because the summer was really crazy, I think it was pushed by a lot of AI, we had to do a lot of innovation, we worked with NVIDIA, NVIDIA was working, uh, trying to install Kubernetes into their own uh, DGX platform, and they, like I said, Kubernetes was not ready for running on GPUs. And it was very rigid, it was very easy, to, di very difficult to share, there was no way for to move uh, and create a flexible environment like people are now accustomed to. Because you go to the cloud, you click a button, you get a cluster. You wait a few minutes, you get a cluster. And now I get my own multi-million dollar uh, system and I cannot really do anything with it. Uh, I'm like super rigid. I create one cluster and that's it. So all the work that we had done with NVIDIA was really to make their platform super agile super efficient because they don't come. Like, I think they ship like 40 of this platform a year. And so only 40 people in the world can actually get this platform. And once they have it, they want to share it because it's like super expensive. So how do you create all the components? How do you improve Kubernetes to make it easily shareable with a click on a button like you do it on the cloud? So yeah, that was super amazing. I just joined as we cluster was going through all these releases and all the different features. And we went from just doing the control plane on a pod to do network segmentation, reintegration with Netrix. We went to building like complete VPN across multiple cloud with tail scale. We, we built our own carpenter solution so you can actually auto scale, right scale. If um, workloads increase, we can get bigger nodes. When they decrease, they get smaller. It's just amazing. And I think the amazing part of vCluster is like the team is really like delivering production grade enterprise software, even just being a small startups. I never seen that before. I'm really impressed. I mean, I've been covering uh, vCluster you know, the Loft Labs in the early days, you know, when it, was, it just came out of existence. And uh, the, the growth that I have seen of the company is incredible story of, you know, you can talk about success stories of Kubernetes ecosystem. So that is really incredible. Uh, you, you're, you're talking about there is only a certain amount of luck. We all love hardware because shiny, you can touch it, you can feel it. But you, it, the challenge is that it has its own... It's hardware. Things are hard coded. It's not as fun as software. We can use that, and then also there's limited amount that you can get. It can get expensive. So can you also talk about? Uh, you did touch on that, but I just want to go a bit deeper into that, which is there is a shortage of GPUs. You know, and Nvidia, of course, has to cater to the high end customers who are living over there. How is V cluster helping? kind of mitigate this problem of shortage through your technologies, the announcement that you also made here with them, uh, so that I can use the word democratize it, so that more people can can access those technologies. Well, and what we built uh, is really a way, and we focus on multi-tenancy at the Kubernetes layer, so then we can actually share the GPUs. Because the GPUs, the problem that they have is once a pod, a workload get attached to a GPU, that GPU and all the memory that is like gig, a gig of memory, not just a megabyte of memory, get assigned to that workload. There is no way to share it. Like you come in, they're like, no, it's 100% busy. You cannot do it. Even if that workload is not doing anything, it just locked this uh, GPU for until, you know, he's done doing the work. So what vCluster may, made it easy for GPU to be shared across teams, and you can easily move them from one team to another. So you go from 20% uh, utilization to 80% utilization. And that is like huge, because if you're considering I don't know, you only have one system, you don't want one team to be able to use it. You want 100 teams to be able to use this super powerful machine. It's like you get a Ferrari, and usually Ferrari is one seat, and that's kind of what DGS is. It's like a big system, big expensive, super powerful, but one seat. 
imagine the cluster is like adding 100 seats to that Ferrari, so everybody can go faster. So I think that is what we spend a lot of work. And since our technology was already built for sharing, adapted to the GPU, and that's really where the sharing is important. You want to be able to share these expensive resources. So that was pretty amazing, uh, the work that the team has done. And, um, and, and then what the companies are doing now, there are also a lot of service providers that are buying these systems. And for them, sharing is even more important because now they have to share it with multi, um, their users. And you need to make sure that everything is segregated, not just the control plane, but networking, storage, policy, users. And that's all the innovation that we add through the summer. And we really create a spectrum so customer can choose. If you just share between a team, you just, you're okay with just simple control plane isolation. If you share it between companies, then you want to go to full isolation and everything in between are easily configurable. Can you talk about how we cluster evolved or the way it was designed? So when the GPU workload start coming in, you did not have to go back to the to the blackboard. You know, it was a natural progression evolution. So talk a bit about the design of you did touch on that was so already the way it was. I mean, I, I, I'm running short of words, you know, the way it was designed that it was ready to take on these workloads. So talk about what's new in the cluster and how the way it was designed was ready to take on not only this, and what will be the next wave, it will be ready for that, which we can't even think about what it will be. Yeah, I mean, initially a lot of the use cases were more about uh, giving the clusters. It was a tool for developers since the cluster is like an app at the end of the day. And so what we see is central IT will give you one cluster, maybe if you're lucky, maybe you get two. But now developers discover V clusters like, well, if I just deploy, deploy V cluster, I can get my own cluster and I can de deploy 10 of them. IT doesn't even know. It's kind of a shell, I get my own cluster, they don't know, they think they're giving me one, I'm using 10. And so that was like the first use case that made the cluster super powerful because developers, without asking anyone, they can create cluster for themselves. And that was really the base of this tenancy, the capability of sharing. And so for us, it was mostly about using that technology and start working below the layer of infrastructure layer. So all the, the announcements are, you probably heard about private nodes and auto nodes. So now you don't need to get IT to configure the cluster for you. We cluster itself can go and provision nodes. It can even go and create VMs. Like for example, on DGX, because mm -hmm. you have the problem where you can run just a certain number of pods inside a server. So even if you have a server with 100 gig of RAM, you have maximum of 200 pods so you can run. And if your application are not as big, you're gonna waste a lot of runs. So you want to create VMs. So now vCluster can create VMs for you, can segregate it. So in every VM, now you can run 200 pods. So you multiply by the number of VMs that you can create, you can run hundreds and thousands of pods. So, and then I, I touched upon before, I know, networking. So how do you actually segregate the networking, and how do you move networking from I know, layer two and layer three between different tenants? So now if you're doing something, I'm not gonna, and I'm doing something, we are not interfere with each other. Or we've seen a lot of things like uh, storage and you have your data, I don't want to, by mistake, be able to see your data. And then another uh, feature that we added was actually, that is super important, is you want to make sure that your workload are secure. So we actually introduced a technology called VNode that is creating a layer around the pod that it looks like it is a node because as you know, there are these container escape. So you can escape from a container and get access to the node. But if your node is a VNode, then it's like you're again trapped inside the VNode and you cannot do anything to the real node. So that's also something that we did for the GPU workloads. So it's again, to make sure that you create this tenancy boundary without using, I don't know, my love technology. I come from VMware, I was there for, for seven years. And funny enough, we were using vCluster at VMware 
And when my team told me, oh, we need to use big cluster because it's getting too expensive to run all these clusters, like, how is it going to work? Is it possible? I mean, we are VMware. Is there another technology that can do the same? It's like, yeah, it just works. Do they use VMware? No. I'm like, I don't know how it works, but if it works and you don't come and complain with me, go ahead and try it. And they're still using it today. And we used it to create labs because we have to share labs with hundreds and hundreds of people. And then we use the cluster for that. So it's, it's amazing to see how people find the technology, they find the use for it in all kinds of different ways. And, um, and you mentioned about what's going to come next. I think it's probably going to be similar. Like I said, Kubernetes ecosystem, they're trying to optimize, they're trying to be more efficient. The AI uh, folks, right now they just they have lots of money, so they don't care about being efficient, but eventually they will get there. So the cluster will help with that next level of evolution for all the AI data centers when they will need to become efficient, they will need to share more and, uh, and, and that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there may be a lot of organizations who may not care about efficiency, but in realistic world, uh, we are also catering to global audience, uh, especially when it comes to AI workload. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of places, data sovereignty becomes a big issue. Of course, GDPR is there, CRA is coming, AI Act is there. Also, different countries, they have their own regulations. How does this also play when you talk about the isolation, multi-tenancy, security, data sovereignty, having access like Red Hat has around the whole EU-centric so that you can keep your data there with AI things getting even more complicated. So how is vCluster also well positioned to cater to those kind of use cases where at, that's not an option that is mandatory? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we will offer the full spectrum of tenancy and isolation. Uh, so with the latest uh, announcement that we did on the product with auto node and private node and integration with company like Netris and Tailscale, we actually cover the full spectrum from workload, network and storage. So customer can simply configure big cluster for maximum security and isolation. And they, all the issue about uh, data sovereignty and uh, segregation between cluster is solved. There's no, I don't see any, any issue there. They don't need to use any other technology. That, that's really what we, we spend the summer building, like full isolation. We actually, on a slide, call it like you go from multi-tenancy to single tenancy. And, and the cluster started mostly with multi-tenancy for sharing. And now with the announcement, it's more about making sure that nothing is shared. Simone, thank you so much for joining me today. And not only talk about your own journey, but the journey of vCluster, but also how it's also ready for the future use cases, future workloads. Thank you so much for your time today. And I look forward to chat with you again. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Hopefully, you, know, you get some value. It's always difficult to do it in, in person. But uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you.